Welcome back to the most important core concept of the spreadsheet module, and that is writing formulas. Okay, we need an effect for that one. We are going to write formulas. What this means is I'm going to give the ins spreadsheet instructions for what to value to put in that cell instead of ha typing it in by hand. For example, I have a list of things that I like to collect, in my case, programming books. I have a number of pages in the pages column. I would like to come up with a total row and so I'd like to be able to add up 699 plus 714 plus 514. This was briefly covered in the five minute overview so I'm not going to walk through it in excruciating detail. But Remember I flag a formula to the computer with an equal sign. Equal sign is the universal symbol for a cell formula. It will translate across every spreadsheet program you are likely to encounter for the rest of your life. If I hit equal sign, that means that I can give it an operation to do on values in the formula. In my case, I would like to calculate the sum. That's a function. It's a thing that we put in formulas that processes values that we give it. Calculate the sum of every cell from the range D2 down to D4. I can optionally close my parentheses if I like to be neat and tidy. And when I hit enter, you can see that the value of the cell that I typed the formula in into has been replaced with the actual output of that formula. There are 1,927 pages if I read each one of those three books on the list. This is cool because if I mistype the number of pages in Java a Beginner's Guide 9th edition and I actually have 867 pages, I forgot the index, I can edit the cell and I'm still in edit mode, see my cursor, edit mode, enter, and my calculated value has automatically changed. We're going we're gonna to zoom way in. We really want to see this. This is the coolest. This is what makes spreadsheets so fun. Um, the formatting is all wonky here, so I'm actually going to use my cursor and bring this back to just a normal black font. So I selected with the shift key and my arrows. I'm now going to unbold and I'm going to change back to my automatic. Okay, I'm going to format this whole uh, totals row. Notice you can format an entire row if you want by clicking the row number. And then I can say this is bold. It is a uh, totals row. I'm going to give it a light orange so it's differentiated. Okay, so I want my totals. Here's my nice 280 page total. It doesn't make sense to total up additions because those are not representing uh, accumulatable values. What would be interesting is if I could come up with an average star rating for all of the books in my collection. In that case, I know it's going to be a formula, so start with equal sign because I want it to calculate the value for this cell. And I can look up uh, different math formulas. So I don't remember how to calculate the average, but I bet that there's a tool to help me. So I'm actually going to hit escape and get out of edit mode. The equal di sign disappeared because the value of an equals nothing is nothing. And I can use the formulas ribbon to help me. Notice that the formulas ribbon gives you categories, and under those categories are the names of the actual functions. So we're looking at math and trigonometry, that's triangles. And I can scan this, and if I hover over one of the options, it will give me the actual syntax. That means how we put the value of that formula, or excuse me, the function together. And I can see the list. So um, in this case, I'm going to come to, um, I did not see anything about averaging. I could come here, statistical, average. So you kind of have to know where they are, but if you have something in mind, it's really easy to jump to a web browser and do an, a search for the name of your, uh, your spreadsheet program. So I'm in Excel, and I want to average function. And I'll bet the first thing that comes up, ooh, what is this? Yahoo, I want to go to Duck, DuckGo. We want to use a non-archiving search engine. So I could say Excel average function, enter. You'll see that Office Support from Microsoft Corporation comes up first. They have decent function coverage, and I like it a lot because they give you descriptions. They give you examples of that formula. Uh, you can also navigate to that in Excel. If I type in what do you want to do and I say average, it'll look, I can say get help on average. 
the average function. It'll pop up a nice bar, which probably has almost identical content to what I found online. And uh, this will give you examples. I like the way that they give you a little spreadsheet with sample data and exactly how the function would be used in a formula. And that allows us to learn how to use spreadsheets by using the documentation in the spreadsheet itself. So I want the average. If I look at my review, it says the average returns the average arithmetic mean of the arguments. This is a fancy programming word or computer term for a value that is sent into some sort of function. In this case, we say, hey, average function. You know how to add things up and divide by the number of things you're adding. So if I give you a set of cells, will you just go ahead and run the average for me and tell me what you got? That's what we're doing. So equal sign average. Notice as I type the name of a function, it is doing an auto search for me. If I hit enter, something happened. I thought it was going to select the average. And when we did that, we got an error. Now, spreadsheet errors have a way of looking particularly scary. They put that pound sign before it and this uh, question mark. It's all caps. It's like screaming. Uh, but don't be afraid. If you click the cell that has an error in it, you get all sorts of tips. You see a little exclamation point and a diamond to the left. I can click the down arrow and it says invalid number error. Help on this error. My help bar jumps to how to correct a name error. The reason why the name error appears in your formula is because there is a typo in the formula name. Look at the following examples. So let's notice why that happened. Okay, so it shows me looking at this cell in edit mode. So uh, I can, or excuse me, select mode. I clicked it. I'm looking up in my formula bar. Oh, look. I typed the name of the average function, but I didn't give it anything to take the average of, so it's unhappy. I can continue writing it that what I realize is the only thing it needs is that open parenthesis. When I open that parenthesis, I see that it's giving me a tip for what it's looking for. It's looking for a number. I could put a second number. In this case, I'm going to give it the range of cell G2 down through G4. I can look at my auto select tool to see that it was selecting the appropriate range. Maybe I sometimes miss the top uh, the top cell for whatever reason. Now I'm ready to close my parenthesis. That's optional. And hit enter. Ooh, interesting. 3.6666667. That's a very specific rating. You know, I'm a very accurate, well, I try to be a very uh, precise person, but I don't think I could rate a book down to 12 decimal places. So we want to reformat this cell. We're going to go to home because I couldn't find formatting on any other ribbon, so of course it's in the home ribbon. You'll notice that there are um, there are icons for increase and decrease decimal, and if I click that cell, re the function repeatedly, excuse me, if I click the button repeatedly with the cell selected, who has too many decimal places, I can see that I can toggle it. Now this happens to be a repeating number. If I add too many decimal places, I get this yucky looking thing. The hashtags, the pound signs, they're called octothorps. And what that means is the cell can't fit all of its contents. It's the easiest error to correct. I do that by making the column wider. I can do it manually by hovering between the G and the H column headers, clicking and dragging, and I'm expanding the width. Look, I get all of my nice numbers. The precision of Excel drops off at, say, 20 decimal places. That's, that's okay for this operation. And uh, I actually didn't want that many decimal places. That was just a demonstration, so I'm going to shrink it. Now, watch what I can do. I can auto-fit the column width by hovering again between the G and the H, except I'm going to double-click in that mode. It shrunk that column to the smallest possible width without causing the text to wrap. So I have used the function and formula combination. The formula means the equal sign, and the function means the average to calculate the average and the sum of several cells. And that wraps us up with this core content video. The first exercise will give you a chance to look through various student spreadsheets, navigate, tinker, change, whatever. And then the second exercise will ask you to make your own collected items guide in the spreadsheet that we started with the driving miles. Have a lovely time with spreadsheets. Remember, spreadsheets are the most powerful data handling tool the Earth has ever seen.